I'm Rick from Cartridge Classic Cars. On this video, we're gonna do something a little different. Most of the time we do full floor pans, full bodies on cars and stuff like that. On this video, we're gonna pretty much do a floor patch on this CUDA. Now, I'm gonna go over the reason we're doing a floor patch. Most of the time, doing patches and stuff, the labor involved will far exceed what it would be for me to be able to put a floor in a whole car efficiently. Saying that, this car is a little different. This car came from a different shop. It had a lot of work done to it. Um, I did sandblast the car when it got here. The owner thought the floor pan was pretty much in perfect condition. And you could see once we blasted it, all the holes in this area that started showing up. Now saying that, this car has subframe connectors. You could kind of see the penetration on the weld right here on both sides going all the way down it. So really, the only damage we have on this floor pan is around this area. That's it. And it gets kind of pitted over here. So for us to cut this floor pan off the subframe connectors, it's possible to take the transmission hump off, remove it from the back toe pans and stuff. It's actually one of the rare cases that it would be a lot more work to do that. So I'm going to show you my ideas on floor patching because when I like to do them, I try to do them where we basically basically don't see the patch when it's done. And that's what we're gonna go do on this goal. So uh, that's what the goal is gonna be for this video. So basically, we're gonna try to end up, there's a, right here, there's a cross member on this CUDA. So we're basically gonna cut right down the middle of these spot welds on this floor, and we're gonna start our patch right there. We're gonna use a transmission tunnel hump on the four speed for our advantage since the floor stops go to the edge of that. And then really in this whole area up here, you know, we got a cross member, a, a little brace right there that runs up in there. We're gonna leave that alone and we're gonna take that like we would do a full floor and then pull it off the firewall. Same thing with right here. So this area, from here all the way around would be like we're doing a normal floor patch and then we're gonna brace in there. So stay tuned, I'm gonna cut it up. I know there's times I have done the truck right behind us. Um, I did full floor patches because they don't make a full floor pan and I did have to butt weld the floor patches onto the original floor pans. There's gonna be a time and place you might have to do that. Like I said, it just gets real labor intensive, but when it's all said and done, you can get it where it's really close and not be able to see it. This way that we're gonna do on this video is just giving you ideas on how to make your blend a lot easier on a patch. So stay tuned and let's get to it. The first step in this process of replacing this floor patch pan is going to be removing the wire cover for the CUDA. We're going to go ahead and we're going to drill a pilot hole and I'm going to take one of those little 3 8 inch hole saws, drill out the spot weld and you see it just pries up real easy with the air chisel. Once we safely remove that piece to be able to reinstall it later, we're going to go ahead and continue with the 8 inch drill bit on the center of all the spot welds in the patch area that we're gonna remove. Once we do that, we're coming back through with the hole saw, the spot weld cutter, and what I'm doing, I'm not going all the way through the inner rocker or the frame rail. I'm just letting the top cut through the floor pan area. What that's gonna enable us to do is come back through with an air chisel and then pop up the rest of it. And, and I will say, you don't have to get all the spot welds on the thicker metal you'll see in the future i'll be able to just work it with an air chisel against a frame rail and come right up what i didn't show right here is i put a 1 inch inch drill bit from underneath the car and basically traced the cross rail where it comes in and out and now i'm coming back through the top of it and i'm tracing it with a paint marker so i know exactly where the cross rail stops now with a red marker i'm coming back through and i'm making our cut line where i plan on cutting down the center of frame rail so i'm not too far over hanging off the edge of it and I'm also not too far on the inside. When we tack this thing back through, I really want to be able to weld right down the center. That's going to just make our life easier. Also, when we're cleaning our welds, I don't have to worry about the weld getting too thin, you know, turning our 18 gauge floor patch into really a 22 gauge from grinding it down so much and making it weaker. You could see right now, I'm taking the air chisel, like I said, I re I've removed some of the spot welds. Some of them, we're going to just take the air chisel, get around it, and we're basically using the air chisel to cut a circle around it. 
I basically work in the air chisel where I'm prying it up and then once I hit a point where the metal is just kind of tangled and getting in my way I sit there and I'll cut it off with a cutoff wheel and keep going right here the someone else installed torque boxes on the car that's why I'm fighting with this area so much I forgot about those um, they went along with the subframe connector so we have to remove the torque boxes from the floor pan and I'll have to go back through and weld them up when it's all said and done during this process the metal becomes like a razor blade so I really recommend you wearing some kind of glove right now I was wearing a TIG welding glove an old one that I don't use anymore and they seem to work really well moving on we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take the belt sander and we're basically gonna prep all the areas that we just removed the floor pan patch you gotta remember we have all those spot welds still on the frame rails the rocker panel, everything else that we'll just go and take with the belt sander and remove. This point, I decided to cut out the floor pan and I tried to do this on purpose and cut it out on with a reference hole and we're gonna mark exactly where that floor pan that we cut out the patch was on our floor pan brand new section. One, if you buy a full patch panel, that doesn't mean you have to use the full patch panel. Just remember that. I know I've seen it before where guys will take a patch panel and 90% of the patch is good and they feel they have to put the whole patch in there. The rest of this floor pan is in really good shape. So we're really going to just use that front area and we're using the old piece as our template. You also want to use reference holes. You can see I'm using the seatbelt holes. That's a location hole that should be the same on both panels. And just to make sure I'm running a straight line off of it and where I want to be, we're using some tape because of the, the curvature on it. For the video's time's sake, it took me about three times to cut down the edge of this patch panel just to make sure we didn't cut too much. My line was dead accurate, but again, it's better to cut a few times and work it down and keep test fitting it versus you sit there and take a half an inch off this patch panel because you mismeasured something. So think about that. Just spend the extra time cut it down what I'm doing right now I'm measuring for the tunnel hump on the inside and outside to get it to look on the same location that the factory was with the overhang and where it sits and I'm just checking all my other areas to make sure everything fits I'm dialing in now that patch going to the floor pan you can see we still have a couple areas where they're just ever so slightly overlapping we don't want to overlap the panels we want to clean crisp butt weld with basically the width of a cutoff disc down the center as our welding point. At this point we're going to go ahead and we're going to use OSFO. Check out my video on OSFO on a challenger we did but basically this is going to remove any kind of surface rust or anything in this frame rail to prep it for the epoxy. Once we get done with the wire brush and getting as much of the surface rust off as we can wiping the OSFO down making sure it doesn't you know it's not too wet on the car we're going to go ahead and have to wait 24 hours before we let the OSFO uh, before we're able to top coat it you could see once it starts drying it gets this blackish tint and everything and now that we got 24 hours on that we're going to turn our attention to the floor pan patch itself and prep it for tomorrow's project so I'm just using um a hole cutter and we're going to run down and put rosette holes down our hole in a rocker area you could see I make marks all over the floor pan patch on the top and the bottom so I know exactly where I'm going to put my rosette holes to MIG weld we're going to since all the thick metals underneath this floor pan patch we're welding from the top down um, I've done other videos where I usually say I try to put the holes in the thinner of the two materials and use the thick metal as the backing material. So we're just using a drill and um, the tools. There's different ways to put holes in, but basically you see right here, you want to put holes in it. I'm tracing out the frame rails beforehand so we know where to put the holes and just evenly spaced about an inch and a half apart, give or take. It doesn't have to be perfect. Once we're done with that, we're going to come back through with uh, anything that will strip it down to bare metal without taking the metal off itself. Right now, I'm using a 120 grit on a surface prep disc and just running around all the areas we're going to actually weld through. 
once we get everything stripped down to bare metal we're going to take some weld through primer i'm a little bit heavier on the weld through primer but i like it that way this is going to prevent rust in the future with the panels being sandwiched together and then we should be good for tomorrow Fast forward 24 hours later, you could see we got epoxy primer. I did the same thing on the areas we're going to weld and put weld through primer on all the frame rails and everywhere else. I cleaned out bare metal on the top of this patch and on the new floor where we're going to be able to weld together. So now that everything's prepped, now it's time for the final fitment of the panel. We just kind of slide it in place. You can see we, and what it is these patches same thing with a brand new floor you're going to have to do the same exact process for the most part especially in these e-body cars it seems like this corner never lays down well so i'm just taking a monkey on a stick which is like a jacking um, tool and what i'm doing i'm going off the top pillar and i'm basically just ratcheting down pushing down the floor pan to make sure it gets lined up and then clamping in the back we're also making sure all our areas and corners are laid down flat. And what I'm doing now, I'm drilling an eighth inch hole and I'm going to put a sheet metal screw, 5 16 head sheet metal screw through certain parts of the panel just to run it down and hold it in place just so nothing moves and it's less I have to hit down on these parts. We're just putting a couple here or there on the thinner stuff with the inner rockers. These sheet metal screws are self-tapping so they'll be able to shoot in themselves. All right, you can see everything's now fit into place really tight. We got everything screwed down. I mean, this thing's not moving. We made sure our gap here is really good and we'll go ahead and we're gonna MIG weld it. I have TIG welded. You see, I do sell a lot of TIG welding on the channel. For something like this on a floor pan, it's just not worth the effort. We're gonna just go ahead and MIG weld it. Do what you want. Um, it's just with the impurities and everything, the TIG welder, it's just not as efficient as a MIG welder. When it's all said and done, it will look about the same. So let's fire up the MIG welder and get to it. What we're gonna do, we're gonna, Megan, my wife, is gonna try to use the, the welding helmet on the camera. We're gonna start here, because I wanna make sure this edge is all level first, and we're gonna just tack it, and we'll just start running up our sides, and you'll just see, we'll tap it down, we'll put it on um, time-lapse. So let's go ahead and do this. You could see here what I like to do, I like to put constant pressure to make sure these two patch panels are pushed tight against the frame at the same time. And then what I'm doing, I'm, I run my heat a little bit higher um, just for these tacks and everything else and knowing there's a piece of metal underneath. But you see it's just a quick small burst and we just tack both sides together, fixing it. Once we're done with that, we know that's not gonna move. We're gonna go ahead and move on to the rosette welds. So you can see I'm basically working my way up the floor pan patch and now I'm working my way over. What you just gotta make sure on this rosette welding is you don't work yourself into a corner and have a high spot that's starting to pick up. Here's the idea in slow down. You're basically just working around the edge on a rosette weld. I kind of strike the arc in the middle and I work around the edge and bring it back to the center. And you try to keep the weld a little bit hotter and just keep it from crowning up, getting good penetration. All right, so you get the idea about the rosette welds. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna start running my way up here. I'm gonna rosette the front of this, work my way back down here, and we'll come back and I'll finish welding this with um, you just to show you a different style. But the main thing was to get these butt up real good. We're gonna tap them down and get it as level as possible. So we finished welding up the whole perimeter of this floor pan. This is all tacked in. I did spot weld the areas in front of the floor pan to hold it down tight. We're gonna go ahead and butt these two together. Now these these two pieces are overlapping a frame rail the whole way, the cross member. So what I'm gonna do, I'm not worried about bending it. We're not worried about like we would do external panel spot welding it. We're gonna just run down the tack the whole time. But when we're welding, we're not gonna put the trigger on. We're gonna kind of just work it with small little burst tacks, you'll see. So let's go ahead and weld this up. That'll finish all the welding and we'll get it cleaned up and then wrap this project up. What 
I like to do on these little burst tacks is basically work off the puddle, like we were saying with a TIG welder, but it's a MIG welder, while it's still hot. So you're kind of keeping your heat in there, you're making sure you're not burning through, and you're just working off that red hot area so it's an easier strike and arc and get good penetration on the next quick little set of bursts on it. So that's the idea behind it. The welding helmet right here kind of starts going out of focus. So we're going to just fast forward to the end. And it's again the same process through the whole thing. I think this is just more efficient doing it this way than doing a tack like you would a quarter panel tack here, cooling it, knowing we don't have to worry about warp in this area. And then you don't miss any spots along the way, also. All right, so you can see we welded it up. I got to fill up a hole there, pull that screw out there. But for the most part, we're wrapped up. I'm going to go ahead and start cleaning, and then we're going to fine tune, see if we missed anywhere welding, and we'll come back and we'll wrap up this project. The cleanup process is going to be the same as earlier. I'm going to use a belt sander here with an 80 grit on it. You can use a grinding disc. You can use a surface prep disc with different varying grits that you work your way down. You can use a combination of all. I know on the, sur the area that we were welding, right across we did a little burst welds. I used a quick grinding stone just to knock down the high spots and I'm coming back through with the belt sander and just kind of fine tuning everything. I personally like the belt sander because when the whole project's done and we go put our epoxy on it, it really does hide the 80 grit scratches. So just do what's best for you, what you're comfortable with and the idea is to get the metal clean. All right, so wrapping up this floor pan patch panel install job. You can see we got everything ground down. We cleaned up this area. It's not perfect. If you look hard enough, you could kind of see where it is. But on the bottom, it looks good. You got to remember, it's going to have a bunch of different coats of paint, 2K primers, everything else that's going to cover it up. Plus, there's going to be a carpet on top of this. But all in all, I think we blended this patch really well. It's really strong and it looks a lot better than the rusted area beforehand. I am going to put some E-coat on it so you can see how it's going to look with the white that kind of covers it up a little bit just to prevent it from rusting while we work on the rest of the car. Underneath the same thing, we're going to put a little bit of white on there and just make sure again nothing rusts until this car gets on rotisserie and anything we might miss we're going to go under there and we're going to clean up while this car goes under rotisserie so hopefully you enjoyed this video hopefully you got something out of it like i said it's a little something different than we normally do um being that it's a patch job not usually full panel install or full car building so like our videos, um, if you like the content, uh, subscribe to our channel, we really appreciate it, and uh, share with everyone else out there. So till the next video, I'm Rick from Cartridge Classic Cars, I'll see you next time.